Hi, this is Abby with the Heirloom Farmer. It is a beautiful rainy Friday and I thought I would take you along on my walk through the gardens. I think that all gardeners and farmers should take time to regularly walk through their gardens and fields. There's a lot of really important reasons why you should do that, and I'll point some of them out as we go. But I think really one of the most important reasons is to take a moment and enjoy all of the work that you're doing and to really appreciate just how amazing everything is that you're doing. Sometimes we get so caught up in everything that needs done or caught up with problems that we forget to take time to really enjoy what we're doing and really enjoy um, the results of all of our hard work. But I think that that's really important. So when I do these regular walkthroughs, I am looking for any potential problems that I need addressed and making notes of those. But I also really try to focus on really enjoying everything that's going on, enjoying everything that's going well, and just taking a moment to enjoy the beauty that comes along with gardening and farming and to remind myself why I do this. I do love this. Uh, sometimes it just I just need to remind myself of that when, you know, maybe things aren't going well. But I just walk through and again, I take a look at all of the beauty. But I do go through and I look to see, are there any pests? And do they need to be addressed? We have been finding a few cabbage worms, but I've been able to keep up with them by just picking them off. And actually the last few times I checked, I hadn't found any. There's a slug, oh, he just fell down in. But otherwise, these cabbage look great. I can't wait to harvest them. I know I need to be patient, but these cabbage are some of the most beautiful cabbage I've grown yet. The garlic is doing really well. Pretty much we've harvested all the scapes, but I've been looking through to see if there's any that we've missed. And I did pull back the hay yesterday because I wanted to see what they're doing and they are bulbing up really well. So I can't wait to harvest those in a few weeks. We've got more garlic over here and my experiment with potatoes, although I don't exactly recommend growing two root crops together. I had some potatoes and I wanted to see how this would work since we should be harvesting the garlic about the time the potatoes are really starting to form tubers. Although I do see this one is starting to flower, which means they will be starting to form tubers. So the timing might be off a little bit, but I think we'll still get a good harvest of both. I'll let you know how that works. There's a scape that we missed. It is important to pull scapes off when you see them because Leaving the scapes on causes the garlic to put its energy into flowering. When you pull the scapes off, actually we missed quite a few. <laughs> when you pull the scapes off, the plant then puts its energy into the bulb. And there are lots of studies on that being, you know, accurate and that it does really impact the size. I've really been enjoying these raised beds and I really like this arched cattle panel trellis. We made it pretty wide so that we could fit our mower through, um, but I can't wait for it to fill out. I have jade beans coming up, but everything else in this bed is looking really great. When I do walkthroughs, 
I like to make sure that plants are trellising well. Tomatoes grow great on these trellises, but you do have to give them some guidance. Um, cucumbers as well, but they, they get the hang of it pretty quickly. Um, so I'll just wrap those around and do a quick check for pests. Oh, here's sunflowers that I planted that are starting to come up. I interplanted sunflowers through both of these beds to add some beauty. This tomato, I can't get over how big around the trunk of that tomato is. This is an Armenian cucumber. I can't wait to eat those. And we've got red noodle beans here really coming along. We do have some zucchini on here. It looks like maybe the first few didn't get pollinated real great. Uh, they're forming a little funky, but it's exciting to see zucchini coming. Let me know if you like to eat zucchini blossoms. This would be about the stage to harvest them at but I just haven't given that a try yet. <laughs> um, I want to, I just uh, need to figure out a, a good recipe and, and how to do it and really just give that a try. I noticed some weeds coming up along the edge of the raised bed here. So if there's small things that need addressed, I will address them in a walkthrough. Otherwise, I just try to make note of what needs to be done and then I'll come back and do it another time if it's a task that's gonna be time consuming otherwise I get distracted and never make it through a walkthrough. The onions are starting to come along they were struggling for a while but they're starting to take off so that's exciting. I've done some other videos on our Ruth Stout garden method it's not looking so great, uh, kind of to be expected this year because I know there's still a lot that needs to happen with the soil health under this. So it's not this method per se, it's the soil health and the fact that we've got slug issues. But um, it's definitely keeping the thistles down, which was our primary goal. Um, there's a harvestman and two ladybug nymphs. Don't confuse ladybug nymphs and potato beetles because you want ladybugs in your garden. They're awesome. Um, but you can see that damage is from cucumber beetles. These plants should survive even, even that much. They should survive and it looks like they are starting to outgrow the pressure of the cucumber or the the flea beetles rather that's flea beetle damage but they're coming up through and planting the potatoes this way was really super easy I just stuck the potatoes down on the surface of the soil covered it back over with hay and straw and then they are coming up so there is a weed here um, but I just pull it up, get as much of the root as I can, and then make sure there's plenty of hay over that area. And that's that simple. And we've gotten quite a bit of rain in the last few days. So you can see the water here is ponding, partly because of poor soil health, partly because this is a lower area here. But that's one of the reasons that we have future plans to extend the raids beds over into this area. Um, but we also are working on soil health to help with water infiltration. There's a ladybug there. I've been seeing a lot of ladybugs in all stages. You can see there's another nymph, and it looks like there's one that's 
empty an empty shell where an adult ladybug emerged. And there's a larva getting ready to go into nymph stage. So ladybugs are really beneficial in the garden, especially for aphids. Oh, well, there is a thistle coming through right there. Um, but it's been much more manageable um, compared to that. <laughs> Which is what we were fighting with. And one of the reasons we decided to try the roof stout method, and also that's one of the reasons we have this plastic down is to eliminate these thistles. And this section here, we are gonna cover with plastic for a while to kill the thistles off. And then it's gonna become another section of our insectary or our basically our planting of flowers for the sole purpose of um, hosting beneficial insects. And I think this section of the garden here is one of the biggest reasons I'm seeing so many ladybugs in the garden this year. So we have echinacea, yarrow, and oregano that has been here for about three years. We just let it grow in mass and leave, you know, we harvest some of it, but, but we leave it in the fall. Like you can see the old dead stalks from last year. We leave that as habitat for beneficial insects. And again, it seems like it's definitely paying off because I've been seeing ladybugs in the garden and other beneficials like hoverflies. Um, and they seem to be coming from this area. You can see there's a ladybug there. There's a ladybug there. It looks like that might be the shell that it came out of when it went from the nymph stage to being an adult. There's one in the nymph stage. There's one over there in the nymph stage. They're just all over these plants, which is super exciting. So we're planning to expand this space. I also planted in some calendula, some sunflowers, some other um, flowers in where there was gaps. Um, but we plan to extend this along here and really leave it kind of as an undisturbed area year round to increase beneficial insects. I haven't seen any hoverflies today. They might not be too active because of the rain. But when I do walkthroughs, I like to look and see what's going on with the insects. Oh, there's a hoverfly. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. He's moving around really quick. There he is. So super cool to see what's going on with bugs and insects in the garden. It can make a huge difference beyond what you would think that just, you know, bugs and a few flowers would make. They actually have a huge impact. All right, let's see if I can get this focus to cooperate. All right, so I'm gonna keep walking through. And a lot of this is a work in progress. It's not all exactly how I really want it to be, but we're making progress, especially on the soil health. Um, here I have sunflowers, three rows of sunflowers for cutting. You can see they're coming up. But then I added a cover crop in between. We'll see how it goes because I'm going to have to walk on the cover crop to harvest the sunflowers. But if I can keep the soil covered and feed the soil health, still grow sunflowers, even if I trample some of it down, I'm totally okay with that. So 
I just threw this cover crop mix in here and we'll see how it goes. Um, I think as long as the sunflowers stay ahead of it, which they should, it'll be totally fine. But it's important to keep so soil covered as much as possible. This is our sweet potato area. I am a little concerned about how they'll do in this soil because it's a fairly heavy soil. Um, but I did notice, so I planted these about a week and a half ago. And I'm excited because I am definitely starting to see new growth. So if you planted sweet potatoes, that's what you want to watch for is new growth to tell if they have rooted. And you can usually tell because the new growth leaves are usually a little bit shinier. You can start to see new leaves forming. And all of that is super exciting. Now I haven't planted anything in these rows. Um, planning to just let it go and have the sweet potato vines cover this soil. But if you've ever interplanted sweet potatoes with anything and had success, let me know. Uh, I would always love to give that a try. Uh, but it, again, it's just super cool to see these starting to take off. Over here, we have our potatoes. And you can see these potatoes are doing way better way better much better much better than the potatoes we looked at in the Ruth Stout garden the soil here has been amended a little bit more but they just seem to be doing so much better you can tell by the color they're a darker green um, they have less flea beetle pressure although you can see right there those are flea beetles um, but again in this number they should be fine. And other than the flea beetles, I haven't been noticing any pest pressure on the potatoes. And they seem to do seem to be doing really well. This odd spacing is because we were adjusting our planter. Um, so yeah, the, the spacing is not ideal. Um, oh, there's a ladybug. Hanging out on the potatoes. So definitely comment below and let me know what beneficial insects you've been seeing in your garden and things that you've done to improve the beneficial insects in your garden. That's a pumpkin plant that volunteered. And isn't it crazy how usually the volunteer ones look so good? <laughs> like, that looked great. Um, we'll see what it ends up being if if it survives us hilling the potatoes, I'll let it go. Otherwise, it might not make it. Volunteer plants are kind of funny. But I did just hill these once, and in probably two weeks, depending on how they grow, I will hill them again. But they look like they're doing really good. Another ladybug. One benefit of walking through regularly checking everything out, it might seem like it takes time away from getting other tasks done, but it can often prevent major issues. You can catch issues sooner. You know what needs your attention and when. 
so it can really save you time in the long run. Uh, for example, I can see we need to take care of these weeds right here. Um, so we'll come through our pumpkin rows with the cultivator as soon as it's dry enough to get in the field. But yeah, these weeds popped up like crazy. Um, under, so it's hard to see um, because of the row covers. But under there, our pumpkins are coming up and they're doing really well, which is super exciting. And the pumpkins under the row covers actually came up faster than the pumpkins outside the row covers even though they were planted at exactly the same time and I believe it was because the row covers were holding in just a little bit more moisture a little bit of condensation and that made all the difference in their germinating but these are coming up now I try to have all of our pumpkins and squash covered with row covers we are organic we don't spray any pesticides and so row covers are really important for all of our squash and pumpkins but I miscalculated so we didn't have enough row covers um, we'll see how the ones outside of the row covers do um But we use Agrabond 15 floating row covers. And we do not use hoops. So they're laying right on the surface and you can tell when it rains, they get a little heavy. Um, but we've done this a couple years and we've never had any issues with the plants not being able to push up you know, underneath this row cover. So sometimes I do come through after rain and kind of shake it some to give them that space to grow. But again, we've never had any issues with it. You can see them coming up under there really well, which is super exciting. We've got some really cool varieties this year and I can't wait to try them out. We've got some great edible and ornamental varieties. But with these outside the row covers, I'll actually use them to monitor pest pressure and see what kind of pest pressure we end up with. So it'll be interesting to note that difference. We use crop rotation, um, the row covers, and I'm really working to learn more about other um, cultural and biological controls and see what else we can do to combat pests, especially the cucumber beetle. That's the one that we have the most trouble with. And it's typically at this stage. So, um, if they are, if there's a lot of cucumber beetles at this stage, they will just decimate the plant and it will die. Once they're bigger, they can survive quite a bit of cucumber beetle pest pressure. So what we'll do is we'll leave the row covers on until they start to bloom. When the plants bloom, we'll remove the row covers so that they can be pollinated. And they also usually by then have outgrown the row covers even though, so it doesn't look like there's much here, but there's actually 10 feet, they're 10 feet wide and about a foot on either side is covered. The rest is bunched up here in the middle. So that does give them quite a bit of space to grow, um, but we will have to take those off when they start to vine and produce blossoms, usually mid-July. But once that happens, usually at that point, um, they survive pest pressure, at least from the cucumber beetles. So everything here is looking good. I'm excited to see that. I am gonna walk 
all the way over to part of our field that we planted. So some of this is not planted. This is our clover pathway, aisleway. We've been planting white clover early in the spring as we're able to purchase seed to fill in our pathways to create living beneficial pathways. This section of the field is going to get planted in sunflowers in succession, timed out so that we can open our sunflower field up to all of you in September. So we've been preparing this field and waiting for rain and now the right timing. We have more pumpkins out here. And this is buckwheat here, which has now become a weed. A weed is a plant growing where you don't want it. Buckwheat is not necessarily a problem or a weed. See, pretty, pretty buckwheat. It's, it's a beneficial plant, but it went to seed here a couple years ago and now it just keeps coming back like crazy. So we planted two long rows of pumpkins here for you pick or pick your own harvest your own pumpkins will be here in these rows we'll have another section of sunflowers here behind the pumpkins and then out here this is what i really wanted to come check on because i'm pretty sure the pumpkins won't be up yet but this section out here we planted in a summer cover crop and you can definitely see it is coming up and it's coming up well. So we're super excited about that. We'll see how it does, but we have a couple goals with this cover crop. One is to give the deer something to eat that's not our sunflowers. So. Let's hope that they prefer this over sunflowers. Um, also to pat, um, create diversity, attract more beneficial insects, and improve our soil health and feed our soil. A lot of things going on. So it's cool, exciting to see that has come up. The birds always go in there and eat the seed even though we cover it and I'm always concerned they're gonna eat it all because it looks like they're chowing down, but they didn't eat it all. Mm, no pumpkins coming up yet, but that's okay. We just planted them about a week ago. Weeds are coming up, that's for sure. So that is my walkthrough. But it is just so nice to be out here knowing that we just got over an inch of rain which is great even though weeds are coming up like crazy the rain is good for everything that we planted and even things that we're going to plant because the soil will hang on to that moisture and i hope that you will take time to go walk through your gardens or across your farm today really just Take a look at it, see what you observe, see what you find. Share in the comments with me if you find anything cool, what kind of beneficial insects you find, and what you notice that maybe you haven't noticed before. Again, just take time to, you know, take that time to enjoy what you've been working really hard on. All right, that's all for today. Thank you and God bless.